Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics and in this video I'd like to discuss the political pressure on Boris Johnson to relax the two metre social distancing rule, what effect it'll, it'll have and how I think it's quite likely he will use widely debunked science to justify it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So, why will the government inevitably relax the two metre distancing rule? If they haven't already done so by the time you watch this, um, it won't affect most people because when you're out and about, you do see some people making an effort, but most people are not observing it anyway. And even the ones who are making an effort, if we're honest, there's a lot of situations where you cannot observe two metres. It's really not going on that much. But where you can observe it, some people make an effort, many people do not. So this is essentially about workplaces because they know people are ignoring it out and about anyway. But in a workplace, um, you know, they, you are limited by law as to the number of staff you can have working there because of the two metre social distancing rule. And, and that is, of course, where you absolutely have to make sure there's a two metre radius bubble around people. That makes it impossible to get everyone back in. And, and this is as relevant in teaching, for example, where I've got first hand experience because at the college where I do some part time work with the current guidelines in one of our largest labs. In fact, in our largest lab, we can get five students in it. That's it. The regulations do not allow us to put any more than that in. Now, if the government relaxed the rules, you could get more in, of course, and that is what it is all about. And the same would apply, of course, to other workplaces as well. For the Conservatives, it's all about relaxing the rules as quickly as possible, rules that they did not want in in the first place, to get their businesses back into healthy profits. But they do not want to be seen to be throwing lives away. That's why they reluctantly agreed to the very delayed lockdown in the first place. So they need a justification. Now, last week in Prime Minister's Questions, Boris Johnson, when asked this, tried to explain how, as the rate of infection goes down, the safe distance needed also goes down. Now, this is incredibly scientifically illiterate and won't make sense to even an intelligent non-scientist and certainly will not get an actual scientist supporting such a notion. Of course, the government have now abandoned the notion that they are being led by the science. Rishi Sunak, the Chancellor, for example, quite recently said in a briefing that it was up to ministers to decide on the safe distance, not scientists. But you'd think they'd want some scientific basis for the inevitable relaxing of the rule. And I think I know what they may use. So there is a bit of a problem at the moment in the world of science when it comes to scientific analyses on the issues surrounding the pandemic. So the way things work with, a sci with scientific research is your team produces your research, publishes it, well, it doesn't publish its findings, it writes up its findings and then they are peer reviewed. Other scientists with the qualifications to judge it, consider it, make sure that the, the results are repeatable, make sure the conclusions are valid, for example. So it's like proofreading, another person's taking a look at it. And, and that normally works reasonably well, with a little proviso in a minute. The problem is at the moment that there is a huge urgency to find out as much as possible about the coronavirus as quickly as possible. And some scientific papers are being published by reputable journals with a very rushed attitude to peer review because of this urgency. Now, peer review in itself does have genuine weaknesses. Uh, in theory, it should be very a robust way of doing it. It's like mass proofreading. Um, but like I say, the, the idea is the author submits it and another scientist will critically evaluate it. If the consensus is that the findings are repeatable, the conclusions valid, then it can be passed for publication. However, as has been noted, particularly at this time, it's, been, it's become particularly notable. There's not a lot in it for the reviewer. The scientist who's having to peer review doesn't really get anything. Their bread and butter comes from their own research. In order to get grants these days, you have to be publishing paper after paper after paper, or you've no chance. I know some people who, and I've known for many years, and it's been like this for quite a long time, people who work in, in, in the field of scientific research, and it's constant. You're having to churn out papers at a rate or not. And, and a lot of people, sh you know, will explain as a result of this, they can't actually do anything really big. 
Um, but the problem with that is, you know, any time you're spending reviewing someone else's work, for which you get no credit, is taken away from the time you need to churn out your papers to get your grants. Um, you know, they have to publish at pace. So they want to spend as little time as possible reviewing other people's work. So you combine this with the urgency of finding out as much about the virus as possible, as quickly as possible. And a few things are being passed without really enough scrutiny. The latest example is a study from a group in Ontario that suggests that reducing the distance from two meters to one meter increases the risk of infection from 1.3% to 2.6%. Now, let's, before I go on to why that is wrong, that conclusion was wrong, let's say for a moment that it was actually true, that this, the, the data backs this up. The problem is that most people's lack of mathematical understanding will cause them to downplay this. Classic example, I'll give you someone on Twitter, uh, perfectly well-meaning, but they were saying when, it, when we're talking about the R rate, well, even if the R rate goes up to three, that only means you're going to infect three people. As if, as, and then people are thinking, I know, get, get it in the reds. Well, three people's not much, is it? It's a hell of a lot. Here's how it works. So what day is it today? For you, it's Tuesday. Go with Tuesday. 5,000 new cases. I think government estimates at the moment, there's going to be 5,000 new cases today. With an R value of three, that means tomorrow there'll be 15,000. On Thursday, there'll be 45,000. On Friday, there'll be 105,000. On Saturday, there'll be 330,000. By Sunday, there'll be a million new cases. Within less than a week, we'll have gone from 5,000 new cases to a million new cases a day. And then the next day, it's up to 3 million. Before, you know, you, you, you don't even go a fortnight before you've infected the whole country. Less than a fortnight at an R value of three. No, no, no. And this is the, how you have to understand the mass. So let's look at this particular mass. They are saying that the risk going from a two meter distance to a one meter distance increases from 1.3% to 2.6%. Well, that sounds quite low, doesn't it? No, it's huge. Going from 1.3% to 2.6% is doubling the risk. You are doubling the risk, therefore doubling the number of infections from this. You can pick up infections from other sources. It's not actually just going to double the number of infections. But my God, no, it's huge. But the problem is people aren't good with percentages. And the government could easily sell that as there's, oh, there's not much difference, is there, between two metres and one metre? So why are we saying two metres? We might as well just say one metre. And the research has been published in The Lancet. You know, it's a reputable journal. It's been published in a few other reputable journals as well, I gather, on the basis of reviews that weren't very thorough. You know, the system is breaking down a little. But statisticians, since the publication, because obviously once it's published, then it gets seen by a whole raft of people that are interested. That's when it gets properly reviewed, really. Um, and, and statisticians have widely rubbished it, including Professor Spiegelhalter, who's the government scientific advisor, who Boris Johnson made a mess of trying to quote a month or so ago. The basis of their criticism is that the report doesn't use any data comparing distances of two metres with one metre. Well, that sounds mad, doesn't it? That's because it is mad. They didn't actually have any data. Um, what happened was, it, well, they didn't have any primary data at all. They didn't actually carry out any research. They took other research, which is fine, for a scientific analysis. But they had data not, from, not comparing two metres with one metre, but one metre with no distance at all. And they assumed that the differences would be the same. There have been other criticisms as well like not factoring in the time spent at these distances. Again, the, the, the data doesn't use, the, the study, sorry, doesn't use primary data. Primary data is when you get the data yourself. When you get the data yourself, you, you, we all know from school, I hope, uh, you keep your variables controlled apart from what you're investigating and what you're changing. That won't have happened because lots of different studies will have different controls. They're not like for like, you can't just click, click you know. You know, so it's collecting data from lots of papers, all sorts of factors that could be rendering the figures completely non-comparable. And then 
You know, there are other factors at play as well, one of which is ventilation. This is why the government have actually rightly said that the risk outside is less than inside. That's why, you know, they said, oh, it's all right to meet someone outside at a park as long as you're still distanced, but not in the home. I mean, it's certainly safer. That is absolutely true. Um, but again, you look at people's behaviours, you would think that the risk outdoors is, is zero, the way a lot of people behave. Still, we know the relaxation to the rule is coming. There's no arguing with the backbench MPs and the right-wing media forcing the government's hand over this. It's inevitable, especially when you keep their scientific advice secret, or when they do. But what we've got here is an R value that is at or about one across the country, and it is known to be above one in some parts of the country. And the government are relaxing the rules that were designed to reduce the R value. As a result, you will inevitably raise it. And because it isn't low enough to risk an increase, because that's what sensible countries have gone, they've got the R value low enough to the try easing it off, and then you've gone, oh, it's gone up a little bit, we can manage this. Oh, it's gone up a bit too much, no, let's ease it back down. No, 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 no. we're not doing that. Um, so we are inevitably going to see a second wave that, again, will become truly world-beating in the same way that our first has. And the second wave could build up, according to the government, just in time for a bun fight with the winter flu. Still, I guess Johnson can use it to distract attention away from Brexit at this time. Who knows? But there it is. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.